checkpoint. Let, let's go ahead and let's put the level checkpoint where it's out of the way and hard to find. That's a great idea. It's game design 101 right there. Blue Streak speeds by Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, I shouldn't do that. Well, welcome back to N Plus One Channel. This is Carl. This is the second episode of Let's Play Sonic the Hedgehog. Now, if you don't know why I'm doing this, it's basically because on August 15th, 2017, Sonic Mania comes out for the... Did I really miss those? For the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC, and I am hyped. And, you know, I haven't played a single Sonic the Hedgehog game on this. Well, I don't know. That might be a lie, actually. I think I did, like, one random episode of Sonic Advance 2 when I first started the channel back in 2015, actually. And, in fact, N Plus One channel itself is coming up on its two-year anniversary. Hurrah. But, anyway. This is actually not one of my favorite levels. I, I don't know why I don't like it. It's not exactly hard, and, you know, it's it's a decent level. It's just got, I don't know, music's pretty nice, though. I always thought the Sonic the Hedgehog games actually had some of the best music on the Sega Genesis in general, especially Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Ice Cap Zone was absolutely brilliant, and, um, in fact, actually, it turns out that that song, what is it? It's like a song that's pretty much heavily inspired by this, I think they're called the Jeffersons? I can't remember the name of the song. Oh, it's, it's pretty good though. I even uh, saw a video where somebody basically overlaid the Sonic version with the actual version. Don't ask me why I got that uh, shield. I already had one. There, there, got some tricky platforming. I think one of the reasons why I didn't really like this zone is that, you know, Sonic is a game that's meant to be played very fast, right? And everywhere in this level, pretty much, everything requires you to go slow so that oh yeah okay i was thinking it came all the way down they're a little bit nicer than that i guess can't remember what the name of those bats are but they're they're okay they're kind of a pain in the butt they just sort of swoop in You know, it was rumored for years and years, actually, that Sonic the Hedgehog 3's... Ah, oh, I can't believe I did that. Sonic the Hedgehog 3's music... Are you serious? I didn't even see... Oh, my God. All right, well, whatever. Sonic has passed Act 1. It's like a test, right? You passed the test. You got past Act 1. I guess in all fairness to you, the, uh, the acts aren't terribly long in Sonic 1. Um, probably one of my least favorite zones, although the first time I was actually playing it was in Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and it's uh, Metropolis Zone. I think it's like the eighth level in that game. Anyway, you know, the music was really cool, I thought, but it actually has three acts for, for whatever reason. I actually feel like there was a reason. I think they repurposed a level. And it became, um, and it became Metropolis Zone. Uh, now I think I can actually jump on that. Yeah. Yeah, there's stuff over here. I don't know all the secrets in these games, to be honest. And for the most part, all the secrets in this game are pretty inconsequential. You know, I'm not really stressing too much that I have not got any KS Emeralds. Because there, there is no Super Sonic in this game. Um, really, the only thing that changes if you get all the Chaos Emeralds is that you get the, quote, good ending. But, I mean, it, it's... It's really just a very trivial change, honestly. Uh, the original Sonic wasn't exactly known for its, uh, its story. In fact, Sonic games didn't really start getting any kind of complex story, so maybe Sonic Adventure... Maybe I'm, maybe I'm thinking about that wrong. I mean, there was definitely, like, a, a story component, story element to uh, Sonic and Knuckles. And one thing I actually don't know about Sonic Mania is, you know, does it actually have, like... Oh, so you, don't even get, you don't even get points on your score for getting a second shield. See, that's... They're literally redundant. 
Um, it'd be neat, actually, if there's, like, a story mode. And, of course, around the same time, uh, we're going to be getting uh, Sonic Forces that was brought up at E3. And, you know, it's an interesting choice that they're going to let people basically make their own Sonic characters. It, it's like... It's like the DeviantArt community's, like... Oh, poop. Poop! Ah, no! Oh, wait. Hidden stuff. Oh, yeah, that's to make up for the life I'm about to lose. Oh, shoot. Wait, what? Can I really do that? Well, I mean, there's something here, right? Okay. Okay. So that's... Oh, do I have to go all the way back? Are you serious? All right. So I got to make sure that I actually, you know, like, jump next time. You sink. There we go. Alright, so it's on the third one. You can tell I've definitely forgotten a lot. What? <laughs> what was that? That was like not a normal jump. There's actually all sorts of those little kind of semi glitches, although I think that jump wouldn't have registered as a spin jump. Which means I could take damage if it actually decides to do that randomly. Alright, there we go. We made that. We made that. Uh. That is what I am talking about. All right, you you go, you go, squirrel. Wait, 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 what? I think there's stuff up here, isn't there? Yeah. Checkpoint. Let, let's go ahead and let's put the level checkpoint where it's out of the way and hard to find. That's a great idea. It's game design 101 right there. Ah, oh, really? Okay, okay. I'm trying to make that noise. Ah, blarg, blarg, blarg. Okay. Ah! Yep, there's these baddie guys. It's always fascinated, actually, by the notion of your life being your rings. Because, you know, it, in a way that's very different from, you know, like how Mario was, you know. Basically, you, you sort of had this, this finite way that your life actually worked. Where, you know, you got a power up, and. Well, actually, you know, it, it changed a little. Because in the original Mario, um, your like third transformation still brought you down after one hit to small Mario, and then they changed that in um, they changed that in Super Mario Brothers three, and then I want to say they they, they oh, I'm a dumbass. I mean, what? <laughs> hey, let's just let's just run over here. My apologies for the uh, the random cursing. I usually do try to keep this channel pretty clean. But really, that was just... Ugh, that felt stupid for a second. Oh, oh, that, like that? That right there? That would be, like, also super stupid. Okay. Doing okay, though. I mean, it's been a while since I played this. I'm, I'm not even getting a chance to get Chaos Emeralds, though. So that's a little unfortunate, but I have passed Act 2 with what we'll call Flying Colors. And now it's time for Marble Zone Act 3. You know, one of the things about Sonic games is it seems like every liquid is out to kill you, right? I mean, it makes sense that Molten Lava is going to kill you, sure. But, like, those water levels, man, that the, the music that happens when you start to run low on air, it's just, it's, oh, that is like what nightmares are made out of. Uh, you know, I, I borked that timing there. Oh, it's cumulative. I didn't know that. It's kind of funny to see, uh, you know, score, too. I guess the score does make... Wait, what was the point in doing that? It's just to trap me, right? Ah! Okay. Uh, you gotta spin. That's what you gotta do. I'm actually really looking forward to... Uh, to getting to Sonic 2 and Sonic 3. Those those are really my favorites. Uh, or Sonic 3 and Knuckles, even. Oh, beautiful. Sonic CD, amazing game. I used to work at this place called EB Games, and, and the reason why I say it like that is because I actually kind of think nowadays uh, not a lot of people actually grew up with EB Games, right? Like I did. Um, I also worked there. But, you know, it got bought by, by GameStop. It's not a thing anymore. Well, anyway... When I was working there, there was a guy uh, who, I guess he, he traded a uh, Sega CD to one of my coworkers. Um, 
or like sold it to him because we wouldn't take it for trade. And, and you know, looking back at it, I think he probably wasn't supposed to be to, to do that. Oh no! Are you serious? Nah. Okay. Anyway. Uh. So. You know, I'd always wanted a Sega CD. I always wanted Sonic CD, and this was this was before there was like that Sonic collection on the GameCube that actually had Sonic CD. And this is before you could buy it on PC. This is before there really were avenues of actually sh shiitake mushrooms. This is before there were avenues of acquiring the game like on modern systems. You know, now it's been ported several times. You can get on iOS and Android, and and that uh, the Android and iOS versions, those were done by Christian Whitehead or the Taxman or whatever you want to call them. They're great. They're great. What? Why am I jumping like that? They're, they're excellent ports, actually, and then they're, they really are ports. They're not emulated. He actually went ahead and made a a re-implementation of the Sonic engine, I think, in uh, C. Um, and then that got ported over. So some really cool stuff there. That is just the weirdest thing to jump like that. Anyway, um... So, yeah, I, I always wanted Sonic CD. I'd never played it. I had read about it all the time when I was a kid, you know, like Game Pro Magazine, Game Fan. Um, and it, it was considered to be like, you know, the sort of holy grail of Sonic the Hedgehog that not many people played because not many people owned a Sega CD. And anyway, he was like, yeah, you know, I'll sell it to you for whatever, you know, 50 bucks or whatever, something like that, some, some weird low amount. And... I was like, well, you know, let's trade for it or whatever, right? And so I had a, I had a complete copy of Chrono Trigger on the Super Nintendo. And although that game was actually available on the PlayStation, the original PlayStation at that point in time, you know, it still had a lot of value. So I, I considered it a good trade, right? I traded in Chrono Trigger for a working Sega CD. And, and, you know, I should put working in air quotes. You can't really see me here. And what I ended up doing when I got it is I realized it wouldn't wouldn't read any CDs. So I had this friend, Jacob. He was actually a really close friend of mine. And uh, he actually had fixed various consoles in the past and was trying to figure out what the deal was. Anyway, it turned out that it wouldn't read the CDs because it always thought that the CD tray was open. And so we basically found a way to, uh, to fix the button so it would register as depressed. Um, and... You know, from there, I basically had a, a working Sega CD. And it came, you know, it came with a lot of really cool games. Uh, there was this game called Android Assault, actually. That was, I really dug. And um, I didn't get Night Trap, but I got this, like, other game that's just like Night Trap, which actually, oh, I'm so excited. Um, there's actually going to be a, a re-release of Night Trap, and it's going to be available on PlayStation 4. I plan on getting it, and I'll do a, I'll do a Let's Play of it. Um, I've actually played a good chunk of it. I want to say I never beat it. I always managed to just, like, get somebody killed at some point in time. And, you know, that that game is such a, a piece of gaming history, right? It is not a good game. Like, objectively, it is not a good game. But at the same time, it it has its place in, in history, okay? Because a combination of that game and the original Mortal Kombat on the Sega Genesis with the Blood Code are, are what are responsible ultimately for the creation of the uh, ESRB in America, the Electronics uh, Standard Rating Board or something like that. And then similar organizations as well, the PEGI in PAL regions, and I think that was the uh, Pan-European Game uh, something like that uh, rating board. And then uh, the, the Japanese also had the uh, the CERO, uh, C-E-R-O rating system. Anyway, yeah, that, that effectively would not have existed without those games and their influence and if i remember correctly sonic 2 had like a really early version of the rating system so you know back before there was like teen and mature and all that there was like what they called uh k through a for kids through adults and that was like your e for everyone and i think they had like an ma17 kind of like uh modeled after the um the MA-17 rating for... Alright, so this guy's actually pretty easy. Let me let me stop reminiscing here. I just gotta make sure that I basically don't put myself in a position where, you know, I'm, I'm on that platform still. And again, he's just eight hits to kill. Whoa. 
Of course, you know, nowadays we have like way more extreme games. Uh, I was also working at EB Games when uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas came out and then there was a hot coffee mod thing and then I remember actually having to stick like AO stickers on cases and, and it, was, it was pretty crazy. There was, there was a weird time with that. Because basically somebody figured out, stick a game shark in there, there's unused code, you can access this like mini game that was inappropriate or whatever, or considered inappropriate. I'm going to pause this. But anyway, thanks for hanging out with me watching uh, my Let's Play of Sonic the Hedgehog 1. We just finished Marble Zone. I was about to call it Marble Garden. That's actually, that's not now. I think that happens in the future though, so... If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you have any comments, go ahead and comment. I'd love to discuss this game or just gaming in general. And I really dig comments and I get so disappointed that I don't get a lot, right? Like I'll get all these random views on videos and then it's like, okay, cool. But you know, where, where's the, you know, oh man, I liked this level when I was a kid or I hated this level when I was a kid and all that. I, yeah, I just converse with me, right? Let's, let's do stuff. And you know what? Hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, and you know you like the content you like this or any of the other almost 500 videos on the channel go ahead and subscribe we've been doing this thing for about two years and you know what hey with that said let us keep doing the thing and i will see you next time for episode three later